Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on in. Amen. Thank you all for your patience as we're waiting for our technical difficulties. Thank you, those of you who are connecting with us via Facebook Live, those of you who have come in here and to this sanctuary. We know some of you are not able to come in on Sundays. Sometimes it may feel a little crowded, but you're so welcome to come in here into the house of the Lord on Wednesdays. I can assure you we have plenty of space. You have a little bit more room for social distancing. So we encourage you to come. If you're not able to do that, we thank and praise God for each of you who are connecting on Facebook or who have connected with us on YouTube here at 1321 Providence Road, Brandon, Florida. New Life Christian Fellowship under the direct leadership of our beloved Bishop Dr. Robert L. Register. Amen. Thank and praise God to all of our New Life family and members and extended family members and those who serve here and come week after week to serve to ensure that you all have an opportunity to connect via internet. Amen. We thank and praise God for you. The Bible reads in Matthew's chapter 5 verses 14 through verses 16 and the word of God says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men and women <laughs> that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. So let's let our light shine. Let our light shine and be the light during times of joy. Be the light during times of sorrow. Be the light during times of war. Be that light during times of peace. Be that light during times of lack. Be that light during times of abundance. Be the light. Be the light. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Father God, for embracing us, Lord Jesus, and being here and having your presence be with us on tonight. We surrender all our members unto you, Lord Jesus. We surrender our will, our way, our issues, our thoughts, all the things that we've gone through, Lord, on today. We surrender it unto you right now, Father. We ask you to have your way in this service this evening. Bless those, Father God. Encourage those, oh God, who may have worked and had long, tiring week this week, oh God. Give us a revival in our inner spirit, oh God. Lord, let your word come forth as we, as the minister of God will teach to Tonight, as our pastor will minister to us tonight in the name of Jesus. Be that light for us, oh God, that we may continue to shine even during these times of adversity. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Minister Sherwood. Come on, wherever you're at right now, just give God a hand of praise. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for what he's getting ready to do. Even on this Wednesday evening on today. Be flat. Song says, give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you. Oh Lord. Oh my 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 We want nothing but you Lord Hey oh So give me you Everything else can wait Give me you I hope it's not late Lord, Give me you Give me you Everything else can wait Give me you I hope it's not too late so we sing, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Come on, can you say that with me? Give me you. Give me you. Let me 
everything. Everything else can wait. Oh, give me you. I hope. I hope it's not too late. Oh, to Lord, to Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Somebody tell me. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Can we sing? Chantel ain't dating us now. She done, she done got the ring. Amen. Call it Chantel ain't dating no more. She at the, she's at the altar now, baby. Amen.
somebody give God a hand praise for that. Amen. Ain't no backing out now. Look how she's looking at you. You ain't backing out. We ain't backing out. Amen. How many glad to be in God's house tonight? Amen. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Lord, give me you. I hope that we're not too late. What a song. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Is that your testimony tonight? Lord, give me you. Come on. Say, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Yes, you, God. I want nothing else. Yes, you, God. Yes, you. Yes, you. And all the best, just you, Jesus. Standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need of prayer tonight. Standing in the need. Can't nobody help me but you, Lord. Can't nobody help me but you. I realize that now. I realize that now. It's me, oh Lord. It's me, oh Lord. I'm Every one of those moments, it's, it's me this time. I ain't praying for my mama. I ain't praying for my church. I'm praying for me right now. It's me, oh Lord. It's me. I'm not interceding for nobody. It's me tonight. It's me tonight. It's me tonight. It's me tonight. It's me and you, God, tonight. You got to do something. You got to fix something. You got to do something tonight. business tonight. Father, have your way in this place. Speak to us through these, through these scriptures, through this lesson that was prepared for those that are here, those that will watch today, tomorrow, even when we're dead and gone. We pray for a prepared heart to receive a prepared word. We give you thanks. We glorify you. At the end of this time together, these your people shall be edified over and over and over again. And your name will remain. Listen, oh, loving parents, I beg in Jesus' name. Somebody clap their hands if you love it. Man, good to have good worship in the house. See y'all. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. I want to deal with something tonight. We want to talk tonight about pleasing God through the ministry of giving. Pleasing God through the ministry of giving. Amen. We've heard that those of you that, are, that have your ears to the, to the pulse of the church community, there were some things that were said a while back about tithing, and I just want to address some things. I don't believe I have to, I have to tear down something to build something all over again. But, but uh, we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 1 through 7 in the New Living Translation. And I just want to tell you about a little about, about me. Um, I didn't really know much growing up. Just my mom and my sisters. Uh, we were not we were not agrarian. We didn't build anything. We didn't, we didn't plan anything. We just went to work and went to school and things like that and cleaned up. We didn't have a lot of property. So there was a, lot of, there was a whole lot of ownership. There was not a lot of resources, so there was not a whole lot of information about finances, about, about stewardship. We just was trying to make it. Did anybody know what I'm talking about? We was trying to make it from one day to the next. 
And I didn't really, I didn't really understand or realize or get an appreciation for finances until I got into a system that began to structure my life. Somebody say structure. I had no structure. Not that my mother didn't try, but she was the only one there. My father wasn't there. She tried her best to give us structure, but she couldn't always because she had to work. Amen. And so structure didn't come to me until I joined the military. When I joined the military, I had to, I was forced to, to do a lot of things I didn't like. And one of the things that they, they, they began to teach me was the value of resources of money. Because I realized if you work, you get paid. Somebody say amen to that. And it was there that I realized that, that based on my commitment will determine what I got back. If my commitment would increase, so would my pay. Amen. That was the system I was working in. The only way that you would get more money in this system is if you excelled at whatever your job was. Amen. So the transition from the military to civilian life was a challenge because I was used to that, that system. And so I had to, had to be, begin to get worked on to begin to embrace this new system that I had to deal with. And then when I got saved, I had to embrace God's system. Somebody say God's system. Now, in order to embrace God's system, I had to get rid of the old systems I had. All the old financial systems, I thought how money was, was spent, how it was used, who had it, and those things. I had to flush it, and I had to start afresh. Amen. One of the scriptures that I, I learned real quickly in Acts chapter 20, look at verse 35 for a minute in the King James Version. See, when I came to God like a lot of you came, you came broke. Amen. Can I get an amen in the house? Boy, I got a whole lot of amens. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm glad I'm in the right house. Amen. See, a lot of times, uh, most folk don't come to God when they got a whole lot of money, but they'll come when they got a lot of problems. A lot of people come to God because they got problems and they got money problems. Amen. Look what this text says. He said, I've showed you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak. To remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how it is more blessed to give than to receive. You might see that. So here's a, here's a principle that, that governs Christian uh, giving and finances, that, that you've got to get into a position of understanding. He all right. He better sing. Uh, you understand that, that, that it's more blessed. Somebody says more blessed to give then receive. That's why for a lot of people that have really converted to Christianity, they struggle when they're broke because they want to give. Do I have witness in here? And, and you struggle even if you only have a little bit, you want to give more because you understand the principle right there. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Then we also found out another scripture in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Turn there for a minute in the King James. See, when you're broke and you come to the ministry, we're going to tell you things about money, and you're going to tap, normally you latch on to that because you want to get your pockets filled. But it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to have your pockets filled if you're still dating the devil. Anybody talking back to me? See, if you want your pockets filled, you've got you to cut loose the devil and start dating God full time. Amen. Can't date both of them. Look what it says. Give and it shall be what? Mm, man, don't we like that? Give, see, it's, a, it's, a, it's an action, it's an action word. You have to do something, and then it shall be given unto you. And look how it says, in what? Good measure. So you already got the, the, the principle is, when you give, you're going to get something back better than you gave. See the principle? Give, and it shall be given back to you in good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet, with all shall be measured back to you again. So here's another scripture about giving. All in the New Testament, there's never a word that, that talks about tithing because it's, it's, it's already an agreed upon reality that people will tithe. Hello, somebody. 
I said it's an agreed reality that people will tithe. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Go me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 through 7, where we'll get our teaching from this, this evening. I really, don't know, I really don't need to write to you about this ministry. This is what he's saying. He said, I don't need to talk to you about this. The ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem, verse 2. For I know how eager you are to help. I've been boasting to the churches in Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin again giving. Verse 3. But I'm sending these brothers to be sure you really are ready as I have been telling them and that your money is all collected. I don't want you to be wrong in my boasting about you. We would be embarrassed not to mention your own embarrassment if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all I had told them. Verse 5. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. But I want it to be a willing gift, not one given grudgingly. Verse 6. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Can you say amen? There's four points I want to bring out tonight. Four points. The first one is this. Pleasing God through the ministry of giving. The first point is, is, that, is that you must develop a readiness or an eagerness to give. You must have an eagerness and a readiness to give. That's what the text is saying in verse 1 and 2. Go back to 9, 1 and 2. This is what Paul is saying. He said that the givers that please God, they have a readiness to give. There's an eagerness. He said, I really don't need, he said, I ain't got to talk to you about giving. I don't need to say this. In fact, in the, in the King James, the, it the, uses the word superfluous, which means it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary to me, for me to write to you about something that you know you got to do already. Amen. When you, when when you go to the movies, you know you got to pay to get in. If you're going to drive a car, you know you got to have insurance. You got to have gas. So he says, I really don't need to write to you about the ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem. Verse 2. For I know. See, he says, I know how eager you are to help. I have been boasting to the church of Macedonia that you and Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up the many of the Macedonian believers. So he said, look here, the, the person that pleases God is the person that's eager to give. It ain't got nothing to do with how much you're giving. I'll get you there. And, and what I mean by that, how much has to always be in proportion to what you have. The, the woman that had one might, she gave it all. Even though it was only one penny or two pennies, it was all she had. So God wants us to give in proportion to what we have. Amen. You might see that. So somebody say eagerness. Now, now of course, the, 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 the need here was that they needed to feed people. People needed to be housed. People needed, to, they needed resources. They, 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 were, they were of a, a particular religious order that was new nobody accepted them they would be outcasts so they needed to house them and they needed to feed them and they needed, they needed somewhere where they could co congregate and have fellowship so we know that the church has a responsibility to minister to the needs of its community and i mean community first of those that come to that local church and they call that local church their home church talk to me somebody the purpose of a local church is to minister to the needs of that local church. After they minister to the needs of that local church, they minister to the needs of that community if there are enough resources. Am I getting any sense in here? Now, now th th here's the thing. 
what happens oft times is that when when we have a church, somebody has a vision, oft times the vision has to wait because of the needs of the people. Hard to, it's hard to cast vision because vision needs resources. You know, if you, you come in, you have a plan. I want to build, I want to build uh, a 10,000 seat facility. I want to, I want to also have a, a horse ranch. I want to have a school. I want to do all these things. But guess what? I don't have any money to do it. So that's the vision. So what has to happen is you have to get people that buy into the vision and, pay, and, and begin to pay down towards the vision. Amen. The challenge comes while you're paying towards the vision is that you've got people that are coming alongside you that got needs. So do you stop, do you stop building to meet the need? Which means that means that you've got to have people that understand the vision and the need of people. That makes sense? Somebody said we can do both. You can do both if the people that are there are eager and ready to give. It has to be an eagerness. Somebody said eagerness. See, when there's an eagerness, you can expect them to give. You can establish a budget. You can project the future plans because... They are ready to give. In the text, the Apostle Paul was so convinced that he wrote a letter bragging on the believers in Corinth, letting the saints in Macedonia and Arcadia know that they was going to, that help was going to arrive soon. When we are in our local churches, the goal is to get the vision up. Somebody should get the vision up. And what happens oft times is we're so busy trying to get the vision up that sometimes we, ne we neglect people. What I did was I always focused on people, not so much the vision. That's why we've been renting a building for, for 20 some years. Because I always thought people are more important than a building. I wish I had a witness in here. I said I've always thought people was more important than a building. And I might have gotten that wrong because guess what? Oft times when you make certain sacrifices, you don't get the same sacrifice back from the people. You give and they don't give back. You make the sacrifices and they don't make the sacrifices back. And what happens is you put your vision off. But I'm a firm believer that what God has ordained, guess what? He will establish. No matter how long it takes and no matter what, the, what kind of people you got, you're dealing with. Sometimes God will allow people to run their course and let them move on before he absolutely, absolutely establishes his vision. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Look at Luke chapter 19 and verse 13 in the, in the, give it to me in the King James and give it to me in the NLT afterwards. He said, he called his tender service and delivered unto them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. That was serious, huh? She knows he does ain't. All right, Siri, all right now, shut your mouth in Jesus' name. <laughs> She's still talking. So give it NLT. So he said, watch this. So before he left, he called together 10 of his servants, divided among them 10 pounds of silver, saying, invest this for me while I'm gone. Give it to me in the... Uh, you got this um, Christian standard Bible. You have it in NIV. Let me see it in NIV. I'm looking for the bird do business. Uh, it says, okay, put this money to work. What, what he's saying, the implication is you've got to do business. Somebody say do business. Mm -hmm. So while we're here, the vision has to go up and we got to take care of people. Somebody said we got to take care of people. And as I said earlier, sometimes we're unable to put the building up because of how needy the people are. So the plan has to be short-term and long-term. Somebody said, I've got to have a long-term plan and a short-term plan. The, the, the long-term plan is because it, God might, you might get some people that never come to a place of being eager to give. You might go through seasons of people that are never eager or ready to give, and God has to allow their season to end and bring some more people into your midst 
who will understand the readiness of giving. I wish I had a witness in here. If you trust God, God can do it whenever he feels like doing it. We know that because the first people that came out of Egypt with Moses did not make it into the promised land. They didn't make it into the promised land because they murmured and they complained. So there has to be a short-term plan. And when you see things ain't going up right away, then you have to look at the long-term implications. Number two, pleasing God through the ministry of giving. I have to have a readiness and eagerness to give. And number two, I have to always be prepared to give. Someone said be prepared. You got to be prepared. Got to be prepared to give. Look at verse 3 and 3 to 5 in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 3 to 5. To come unprepared, my God, one of the worst things you could do to a child is to take a child somewhere and then get to the cash register or get to the whatever you've taken them and you ain't got enough money to pay for what they want. It's one of the most embarrassing feelings in the world to have a girlfriend or a wife and you've been sporting all day with her, sporting all day, riding around with the music loud and stuff, and you pull up to the stove. And she go in there and think you're going to, you know, do what you're supposed to do. She go in there and get two bags of groceries and get to the cash register. The man started 800 something dollars. You say, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute, 800 something dollars. I don't know about you, but that's a shame because you got to start talking about put stuff back. It's shame. It, 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 uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? You got to think about whether you put the pork chop back or the steak back. And there are people behind you who say, look here, you don't know what you're buying. You ain't got enough money. Get out of the way. So I've got to be prepared to give. Being unprepared causes shame. Take somebody out and can't pay for the dinner. Huh? We go back there. We have a great, a grand time in church. We go back there and count the money up. Ain't but two or three dollars. <laughs> Folk was shouting shoes all over the place. Come on. Folk getting slayed in the spirit. Huh? Poke up there hollering, running all through the place, shoes flying. You get back there and count eight but a few nickels and coins in there. You say, my God, what else I got to do? But you don't get mad. You just keep doing what God tells you to do. Amen? Look at Luke chapter 14, verse 28 through 29. You got to keep doing it. If the people don't give, you got to keep doing because God will bring people will give eventually. And and watch this. And however long it takes for the vision to come to pass, all He's doing is making sure that when you get there, you can sustain yourself. You can be stronger when you get there. But it's true. Everybody's not going to. Everybody's not going to make it to where you're going. I wish I had Amen in here. I said the people that start with you will not be there at the end when you get where you're going. Even though they might think they got they your ride or die, they're gonna go there. You ain't gonna stop them. Let me tell you something. They can say all they want, but if it's not if it's not in God's plan, they won't be there with you. So remember, I got to be prepared to give. If I'm not prepared to give. I'm being embarrassed. You don't get in ministry and then stop. So it's got a call yesterday. There's a building I'm gonna look at. They want seven hundred thousand dollars for. I think it's twice the size of this. It's a shell. There's nothing in it. When we got this building, there was nothing in it. So I would have to get somebody to build it out. If, if, if they can give me 40% uh, more seating, then I might get it because um, the, the purchase of the building, I think the, the mortgage would be only two, two grand a month, which is less than we're paying now. So... The idea has always, the, the heart of my, my heart has always been to get a building. But you can't get a building unless you got some money. Can't get a building unless you got some good credit. Amen. Thank God I got both now. Hallelujah. Amen. But I just got, and, and, and the wonderful thing about it is that when I got it, I can show it to you. It said that, that they'll, they'll give me the building with no money down. No money down. And, and they wanted $11,000 for closing costs, and they said they'll pay them. And, and, and the building is not, you know how far the building is? It's, it's right on Lumpston across the street from that gas station in Kings. There's an there's a, uh, a, a, a area just like that. So 
See, all you got to do is wait on the Lord. I heard somebody say that, 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 that they were going somewhere and they were in a hurry. They got so in a hurry, they went back to the GPA and the GPS and said, look here, is there another route to go? Is there another way to go? And the GPS said, listen, there are other ways to go, but it's going to take you longer to get there. Sometimes waiting takes you longer, but you get where you're going. Ain't nobody catch that. I'm thankful maybe that I didn't get a building a long time. I might have lost it. Ain't nothing worse. I've seen people lose buildings. Mr. Carla, we was in a church, and it was the one week before they got kicked out that the pastor told us that we had to be out by Friday. And we weren't just, we weren't just moving. We were put out, evicted from the building. I know what that's like. He bit off more than he could chew. And I ain't going to do that. I said, I ain't going to do that. So watch this. Why? Because, but don't begin until you count what? The cost. Who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it? I got to be prepared to give because if I don't get prepared to give, I'm subject to, I'm subject to deal with some shame. And you know, when you're prepared to give, it always shows a degree of love. When you show up at somebody's house and you got something instead of you got your hands out, you know, you all got some relatives like that every time they come. I don't care what cook what cookout it is, Thanksgiving. Fourth of July, no matter what, they ain't bringing nothing. If you tell them to bring some sodas, guess what? Don't look for Pepsi or Coke. Look for the cheapest sodas in the store. Walk with me, somebody. And they always going to want to. Well, always going to want to take some plates home. And they and watch this. And they never want to clean up. People that are prepared to give show love. And they don't show indifference. When you come here, you know, you keep your money in your pocket. That's, just, that's showing indifference. When you, when, you, when you hang out with a church and not join a church, that's kind of indifferent. Now, now, one of the challenges is, watch this, is that we all come with this different understandings about how ministry is done. I went to this church, you went to that church, I was raised this way, this, I was this. But see, the whole idea is that God has to get you in one place where he can plant you. Because if you don't get planted, you cannot bloom and blossom. Planting is critical. And, and, and you, you can't plant yourself. God has to plant you. He purposes you to be wherever he wants you to be. When he plants you, that's where he wants you to grow. Amen. He said, otherwise you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everybody will laugh at you. We came over this building. We got here. I didn't want anybody laughing at me. And God made it so that we were able to get in here and, and fix the place up and move in, and we've been here how many years now? I don't know. Do you know, Carla? Six years? 2013? More than six years? Oh, he's been eight years. So not nine years we've been in this building. Nine years, ten years. And that's something. And guess what? We have not been ashamed. Somebody give God a hand, praise if you can. Readiness to give, and they, 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 Paul said that he used the word forwardness. They had a readiness in their mind to give. How often can this be said of believers of a church? Are we honestly forward reaching, searching for needs to be met? Can others actually know that our minds are ready, set, and focused on giving? And I always find out that, that, that sometimes when we're in trouble, when we're 
we're in trouble. That's when we said, man, if I had some money, that's what I'll give. I'm a, how many talk to me, somebody? You know, when, it's when you ain't got it when you say you're going to give it. Man, if I had some money, I'd, I'd pay your rent. If I had some money, I'd, I'd pay your car. Man, you had some money, you'd be doing nothing what you're doing right now. Lying demons, come on. That's why you ain't got no money. You ain't got no money because you ain't been doing right, right by your money. You know, we always have ever since say, I, when I get some money, what am I doing? No, you're going to do just what you've been doing, messing up your money. Like my mother said, a fool and his money will surely, you know, part. So there was a forwardness, and he boasted on them. Imagine boasting on somebody to do something, and then they don't do it. Especially kids, say you're going to give them a birthday party, and then they sit there and wait. How hurt, how crushed they are. That same thing happens when we try to pay our bills. When the church try to meet its obligations, we crushed when we ain't got, we wondered how we going to make it. Bringing on additional staff. Amen. So there was, there was a zeal and commitment for the Christian church. They stirred these people up for the mission project. Not caught unprepared. Being unprepared causes shame. Paul said he was sending Titus and two other men to reactivate the mission project among the Corinthians. He was doing this least they would be ashamed and embarrassed if they got there and they didn't have it. You know how much shame it is when you ain't got no rent money to pay? Talk to me, y'all. Where my, where my adults at? Talk to me. When you ain't got that rent money and, it's, and it get closer and closer to the rent day or mortgage day, you know how you feel. That's not a good feeling. Especially if you in, in the time that we're living now, you don't pay the rent on the first, second day. They'll, they'll stick an eviction notice on your door in two or three days. Just embarrassing. That's why, that's why I can't sleep with the devil and then ask God to bail me out. Nobody caught that. You want to sleep with the devil, then you want to ask God to bail you out. No, no, he's a righteous God, and he's looking for us to behave righteously towards him. Come on, somebody say amen. And he don't mind you even when, you, when you are unrighteous to say, hey, Lord, I'm messed up. But there are consequences to what you do. So, so number two is always be prepared. Number three, watch this. You give much, you get back much. It's very simple. This idea that somehow you can trick God. You need ten thousand dollars, but you're gonna give fifty. And the fifty gonna get you ten thousand. You think God into gambling or something? Or you into gambling? It don't work like that. God can bless you based on your need, not necessarily based on what you sow. You can ask God to. If you got a situation where you say, God, I need X number of dollars because I'm overextended, he can bless you, but it's not based on what you've given him because the scriptures say you only reap what you sow. You can't get back 6,000 if you didn't sow 6,000. That's the, that's the simple definition of the text. It says, watch what it says. Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse, verse 6, just verse 6. Remember, the word said, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Now, if you get more, more back than you gave, you ought to just give God thanks. Sometimes that can happen. But then if you get in the business and say, you know what, the last time I only gave him $10 and he gave me $1,000. i am going to give him $10 more and see if he give me $1,000 again. You, that's, not the, that's not the right motivation. God can give you more than what you gave him. But the principle is you get what you sow. The principle on giving, listen, I'm so glad that, that he, you know, Jesus said, I did, not come, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. So he didn't do away with tithing. Amen. So tithing is a measuring rod. Somebody says a measuring rod. In the book of Galatians chapter 4, it says that, that the Old Testament is the schoolmaster. It brings us to grace. It's, it's the measuring rod. So watch this. It's the basis of my relationship with God, the 
when, what, what, what Paul is saying now, that I've, I've gone beyond the 10%. Why? Because, it, because I, it's evident that God has done more for me than 10% of what I have. Think about it. He wakes me up in the morning. He's got a roof over my head. He's giving me strength to go to work. I got a family. He's giving me resources. Every time I call over and on him, he answers my prayers. He gives me strength in my body. He blesses my children. Everything that I touch is blessed. Guess what? That's why the Bible says you got a purpose in your own heart. Purpose in your own heart what God has done. And then you give based on what God has done for you. And it will always exceed 10%. Think about it. Remember, this is the farmer who plants only a few seeds. He'll get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Very simple. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. See, when I give, when that lady gave her might, when that lady, Chantel, when that lady gave her might, she gave it all. Now, in comparison to somebody else, it was nothing. It was only two pennies or a dollar. It was nothing, but to her, it was everything. God never looks at what you give. He always looks at what you keep. Looks at what you keep, not what you give. Looks at what you keep. Look, at it says, and the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us by Christ Jesus. So in my giving, I'm, I'm compelled and provoked that as I give, he's going to meet all my needs. Somebody say, all my needs. You believe that tonight? How many believe that God will meet all their needs? Look at Matthew 5 and 17. So when, this, when they talk about the tithe and the law, he, he didn't, he, they didn't talk about it in the, in the, in the letters because it was, a, it was a settled reality. He said, don't misunderstand me why I have come. See what it says, Carla? I did not come to abolish the law. And, and beloved, the tithe was never a part of the law. Abraham gave before there was a tithe. Before there was a law, excuse me. The law came with Moses. Moses came with the law, and the law came, the law was also where the tithe was, or they were taught about giving. But the tithe was long before that. He said, don't misunderstand why I've come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophet. No, I have came to accomplish their purpose or bring fulfillment. Look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Remember, say so you get what you, if you get more back than what you've given, it's just God then gave you favor. And someone said, oh, God gave me this. God, yeah, well, God, God, he does that. He can't do that. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let me go there. We're having some technical difficulties. Galatians chapter 6, that's Genesis. You'll get there in a minute. All right. Look at verse 7. Look what it says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also. See the principles right there. Give it to me in NLT. 
So if you think you want to sow a dollar and get a million dollars back, you might do that at the lottery office, but you can't do that in the church. Yes. Yes. I'm talking finances now. You know, I'm a, I'm a play. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to the casino because I'm a Christian. I'm going to take $10 in there and I'm going to believe I'm going to come out with 10 million. They don't work like that. That's fool's gold. I'm not saying people don't go in there and gamble and come out with money, but no, if you are a child of God, normally nine or ten times, you ain't coming out there with no money. Because if you do, you might go back in there and you might say, well, this is all right to do. It says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. You can't get anything more than what you put in the ground. You see that? Last one, I'm almost done. Number four, never, ever give grudgingly. Never give grudgingly. And definitely not out of compulsion. When you give out of compulsion, it means you're being forced or you're being threatened. But you want to be deliberate. Somebody say deliberate and thoughtful. Why, why thoughtful? When you give, you're looking for a return. Somebody said, I'm looking for a return. So when, if, if I'm looking for a return, Dana, I need to be thoughtful about my giving. It's an act of worship. It, it's pleasing God through the ministry of giving. So if I'm thoughtful about my giving, watch this. That means I've taken time to consider what to give. He says, he says, Go back to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. It said, verse 7, it said, you must each decide. Look at that. See that? It ain't my business to tell you. You got to decide in your own heart how good God has been to you. That's between you and you and you. Not you and the preacher. You must each decide what in your own heart, not based on what's in your pocket. It's a hard thing. You can't live by what's in your pocket. I know I've never lived by what's in mine. Do you? Somebody say, I do, not me. If I've been living by what's in my pocket, I wouldn't be in this church today. I live by what's in your pocket. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> that should have made somebody laugh. Amen. <laughs> That's why I want more members. Let me stop. <laughs> Chris really laughing now. Anna ain't got, she got a smirk on her face. What are you talking about? Ain't getting none of my money. <laughs> Everybody got to decide. If, watch that. If you don't decide, you're going to be set up. Go to church. They'll set you up. You get all there nice and nice dressed. People sit down and give you some water real nice to you. And before you know it, they everybody stand up. They say, come here. Come here. I want to lay hands on you before you know it. <laughs> They got you up there. Everybody's watching you. He said, the Lord told me to tell you that you're supposed to give something tonight. Yeah, you're on the spot. You're on the spot now. And you don't want to offend anybody, and you don't want to embarrass anybody, so you wind up giving sometimes something you don't even have. That's why before you get to those kind of churches, you have to decide before you get there what you're going to give. Now, you could get to church and then they could say, hey, we need X number of dollars, and then you have to make another decision. But all the decision must come from your heart, not just from your pocket. You can't give based on what's, you're giving on, based on faith and based on your heart. Amen. And, and it, hopefully your heart has, has been cleansed and has been healed. And you're not giving, see, when people give out a compulsion and things like that, they're giving because they feel if they give, they're going to get something back. To give, that God's going to correct something. That's not why you give. It's not a quid pro quo. It's an act of worship. That's why you're thoughtful about it. That's why you're deliberate. You think about it. Let each decide in his own heart how much he should give. And don't do it reluctantly or in response to pressure. Not even the pressures that you have. I've heard people come to church, and they say, look here, man, I'm, I'm in debt. I'm in debt. I need God to get me out of debt. And so they give all their money. 
to try to push God to get them out of debt. And it don't work. It don't work like that. Don't work like that. You got to decide in your own heart. Listen, before that woman who had the might, she had decided before she got to church. She was already broke. She had no, she had no bank account. She had no family. She, when she walked to church, her mind was made up. She wasn't leaving the church with the money she had. Her mind was made up. You got to have a made up mind when it comes to giving. If not, something will get between you and the plate. It always does. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We bless you because you've been good to us. We love you tonight because you love us. We want our giving to be an act of worship. We want to get the right return. We don't want to be fooled and think that we're in a casino when we're dealing with you. We already know that you said you're going to take care of us. So that means if we have a bill that, that exceeds what we put in the plate, you can take care of that because you're that big. Let me show what he's that big. He's all powerful. He sits outside of time. Time don't control him. There's no force. There's no power that can control him. And he has all authority. He owns all the gold and he owns all the silver. And he can meet our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ. Jesus. Father, we thank you for the ministry of giving. We thank you for the renewing of our mind as it relates to giving. Give us a renewed mind. Help us see that everything we have, it belongs to you. As they sung this, this song this, this evening. What was the name of the song, Sherwood? Give me you. That's right. See, everything else can wait. You're the one that put the food on my table tonight. You're the one that opened these doors up. You're the one that put these lights on. You're the one that gave me a musician. You're the one that put these people in my life. Give me you. Thank you. We bless you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen and clap their hands for Jesus. We're going to take up an offering. Are you ready to give? I want you to give cheerfully. I want you to purpose in your heart what it is you're going to give. Remember, God doesn't look what you have, what you're giving. He looks at what you, what you keep. If you want God straight with you, you've got to be straight with him. Amen. Something I learned a long time ago. One of the first things I wanted to learn because, you know, I was old, 40-something years old when I got saved. I didn't want to be no old fool and, and them old slick foxes and wolves in the church taking my money and taking my honey. So I had to get smart real quick, man. You hear what I'm saying? I read everything I could think about some money because I ain't want them just ripping. Now, they, they got me because I heard a good education is a board education. Every time they said, get, I couldn't wait, Shantan, they, I could give $1,000. Finally, when I gave it out, now they said, give it out. I jumped up. I thought I was a rocket ship. I jumped up so much that I ran out of fuel. I got so when they said a thousand, I made sure there was no fuel in my rocket ship no more. Amen. Father, we bless you tonight for those that are giving. We thank you for the ministry of giving, the worship and giving. We know that you will give back. You said, blessed are those that give, for it's blessed to give, and it's blessed to give. It's blessed to give than receive. We give back seed to the sower that you can give back bread to the eater. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Somebody say amen. Let's stand for the benediction. I pray you were inspired. I pray you were informed. I pray tonight that God spoke to you about your finances. I pray you want to get it all together, that you want to turn things around. You want to renew your mind when it comes to biblical finances. It's all in the book. I gave you a few scriptures tonight, but if you have anything else you, wanna, you want to know about it, text me, email me, email the church, and I'll be more than happy to expound on it even the more. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the love that you've shown us. We thank you that you've brought us here. Our clothes are clean, our bellies are full, and gas is in our cars. We thank you that we have enough tonight to feed a stranger. 
are strangers. We thank you for blessings that are overflowing and overtaking us. We now speak back life over those things. We give back seed to the sower. God, give us grace tonight like you never did before. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you there's a ministry in giving. And God is pleased when you operate in that order. Be blessed. We love you. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Hit like and share and be blessed. Take us home, Sherwood. We love you.